Hi, saints. May God bless you. May the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead be in you. Let's talk about Jeremiah 29. We know the verse. Everybody knows it. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and give you a hope. We love that verse. Do we also know that that verse is from God in a letter written to the Jews that God basically made suffer for their sin. We do realize that that verse before says, For this says the Lord, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord. So we've seen, I know the plans. This one's saying, I know the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah, this, this little kid, he's a little kid when God calls him to be a prophet. I've done other videos on, I knew you intimately in the womb, that we can speak against abortion, a bunch of other videos about how he had to repent because as a prophet standing in the gap, he was speaking what God told him to speak and, and he got frustrated that, that he wasn't getting results because what was basically happening is these people that were going to church, they said, we're going to the temple, the temple, the temple, we're fine, stop tripping on us. We, we are, we're under the promises, bro. We're under the promises that God made us. We're the chosen. Look at the Psalms. Look at the Sinai covenant. We're good. And he's like, no, God's telling me you're not good. Stop. In fact, you're getting so bad, he's calling you a backslider. You, you're walking blindfolded. We're, we're, the main problem is, is they're walking to the dictates of their own heart. And their sin gets so bad that they're now, God has to smite them. He has to, he has to deal with them. And so the earliest exiles, the earliest ones that... He allows to be taken captive by the Babylonians and by Nebuchadnezzar are the, actually the good ones. He shows a little parallel with the, with the good figs and the bad figs. And we're, we're now seeing how God works. God will use bad things to bring us closer to him. And so we hear this verse, verse and we think it's all easy. And, and yeah, I know he's got me. I can keep doing drugs. I can keep watching porn. I can keep, I go to church. I'm fine, bro. Promises are yes and amen. I'm okay. I don't have to change. God likes me just how I am. All I have to do is let him do all the work. I, I believe he was risen from the grave. I'm fine. I sing that in church all the time. I don't really understand the darkness to light. I don't really understand all that, but I'm fine. Don't trip on me. That's kind of what he was going through, saints. And so God doesn't like sin. Sin costs us separation from God. And Jeremiah, man, what a, what a stud, really. He's a kid. He's a kid and he just grows up and he grows into this. And he stays obedient the whole way through. And in fact, at one point, he's like, I'm done with this prophet stuff. I just don't want to do it anymore. Look, at everybody's pointing fun at me because for a while, all the stuff he said, nothing was happening. He was saying terror on every side to them. And they're like, ha, Jeremiah, terror on every side. Look at this guy. We told you we were good. You're the sinner, shamer. And so he was just going through it, you guys, like bad. And he, he's like, I'm going to quit. I'm done. And it turns out that with God in his heart so much, and God's been speaking to him the whole time, and he's been praying the whole time, that without God, it's just, it's even worse. So he's like, I'm, okay, I'm going to keep going for you, Lord. Well, at one point, these guys are so rebellious that they have a false prophet. And this guy's given like the message they want to hear. God, I'm speaking for the Lord, and Babylon is going to, we're I'm breaking the chains. We're coming home. We're going to grab all the stuff they pillaged. We're going to grab all our people and we're bringing them back. And of course, this is what they wanted to hear. And he said it to the priests and he said it uh, in front of all the people. And he called, he called, he called uh, Jeremiah out. And so Jeremiah took it and he said, well, I hope you're right. It's like, yes and amen. I hope you're right. I hope God does do that. And then, you know, God started calling him to speak into that. And he said, no, nope, actually you're wrong. You're a false prophet. You're speaking to itchy ears who want to hear that. And this is actually what's going to happen. And at that point, what it was, was Jeremiah was showing them, this is what we have to do. We have to be slaves. This is what God's calling us to do, be slaves. And he put like some kind of like chokehold thing on that was wood. And the other false prophet breaks it off. And now he's saying, nope, actually now it's going to be metal. God was chasing you softly the first time. Now it's going to be metal. And you, by the way, you're going to be dead within the year. And so that prophecy plays out, dude's dead within the year. So eventually you start listening to the guy who's telling you, turn, repent, come back to God. It's a good thing for you. He wants, he wants you to be close to him. He knows you intimately in the womb. 
You are his creation. You are his chosen. You are his favored. He loves you like a man loves a woman. A woman loves a man. That intimately, where when we're going against him, we're breaking his heart as if as if we're sleeping around on, uh, if you're getting slept around on, doesn't that break your heart? And you're like, ah, right? That's how God feels. He wants you to have him as your first love. Everything else falls into place. Repenting of even mistaken attitudes. We learned from Jeremiah that when you speak into somebody and you don't get the results and they're not listening, you kind of got to give them up to their own imagination. And you got to let their own thoughts take over because they ain't going to listen. After, after eight words, you already see their minds elsewhere or they're on drugs and they're just not, they're just not computing. And um, we learn that we can't get emotional in this battle, saints. It's a spiritual war and God's doing what he's doing at the pace God's doing it. And God's using whatever he has to do for it to get done. God will use you as the Holy Spirit guide you into a situation and use you, but that might be one of a hundred times that it takes. The person might not ever decide to stop listening to that voice that keeps telling them, you're fine, bro. You're fine. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's not up to us. So one thing we can learn is to pull back our emotions and not let the enemy have that victory. We've got the victory of Jesus Christ. We're saved by, by what he's but what is broken. He, there are no chains holding us back. He broke everything. The devil has nothing but a little bit of time left before he's in the lake of fire. When you understand prophecy and you understand the word of God, you understand that he's a counterfeit. Satan is a fake. He's been kicked out. He's trying to separate people from God's truth and from God's holiness because he wants everybody else to not have that holiness that he's never gonna be a part of again. So the simple truth is, is we speak God as the healer He's the healer of broken hearts. That, those hearts that have been broken, they have to be fully restored by giving them completely to God. He is your first love now. He is your first everything. The first thing you do in the morning is you thank him for this breath he's given you. If you go surfing, you affirm that what he's created is good. God, this is good, these waves. God, your sky is beautiful. God, you are good. Everything you say is true. And all I have to do is speak that Jesus has healed my heart and anything that was attached to my heart and wrong thinking, he is the deliverer of the false mindsets. He's the deliverer of the lies the enemy's been trying to hold you in. Anything, whether it's um, this isn't fair, whether it's racism, whether it's um, you know anything, any addiction you've ever had that you've rationalized away, those mindsets need to be yanked out and replaced with Jesus broken. Jesus is my healer, he's my deliverer, and he's redeemed everything into his economy of glory. God bless you, saints. Speak that out. Ephesians 2.2 2 says that, the, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he's got this area for a while until we speak back into it and say, no, you don't. You got the lake of fire coming. I'm, I'm going to bless people. I'm going to speak into people. I'm going to let my light shine out of my eyes and out of my body language. I'm just going to sing praises to the Lord. And people are eventually going to go, what is that guy doing? I want what he has. If they don't, they can, they can keep getting what they've been getting. But God bless you. May you be encouraged.